TV. But they were wrong. They In what was more of a rally than a the hearing, TV, dignitaries TV representing groups from Washington, D.C. to Main Street joined Iowa Governor Terry Branstad to send a message to the Environmental Protection Agency. Big Oil is delighted that the EPA has recommended weakening the renewable fuel standard, but they're not satisfied. They want to repeal it altogether. We're not asking them to change policy. We're asking to just stick with what's worked. At issue is whether the EPA will reduce the RFS by 3 billion gallons this year, reducing the required annual output to 15 billion gallons. Nearly half of the cuts would be made in ethanol blending requirements. This proposal is backtracking on the accomplishments made in the past 10 years. Representatives from Iowa's Washington delegation who spoke at what was billed as the hearing in the heartland unanimously called on the EPA to leave the RFS alone. And when you have an, an administration that can't make a decision on a Keystone XL pipeline, but can make a decision on this to back an industry up and freeze it in place and what, weaken it so the petroleum industry can buy it out at a few cents on the dollar, there will be support for it then if they own it. And if you spent more time in rural Iowa, the president might realize that if you take too many steps backwards in an Iowa pasture, uh, without knowing why or where you're going, you may just step in something. <laughs> and, and Republican Senator Charles Grassley of Iowa characterized the proposed rule change as short-sighted. This investment has improved the environment. It's improved the economic well-being of Iowans. It's improved our balance of trade and our national security. And Most of those who took the podium expressed concern over the potential loss of jobs, the ripple effect on local economies, and the potential for reduced investment in advanced biofuels. Who in the world is going to invest $200 million into a cellulosic ethanol plant that's going to produce 30 million gallons of ethanol, as innovative, creative, and as much opportunity as there is, if you sense the political dynamics can completely shift under your feet in a matter of a decision or two. Ethanol plant so. managers and owners and also spoke about investment in the future of the U.S. fuel industry. I would ask, how does a country like Brazil, where they drive the same Fords, Chevys, and Toyotas that we do here, blend 25% ethanol on their motor fuel and have for over a decade, while the U.S. cannot get to past 10%? The answer is big oil's death grip on the U.S. consumer. Politicians and ethanol plant managers were joined by representatives of the corn and biofuels industries who spoke to the crowd. Diesel plants. I call upon President Obama today to pick up that phone and to do the right thing for Iowa and America, to do what he promised us he would do when he was here in Iowa, and that is to not mess with the RFS. It was designed to spur the use of renewable fuels, not reward the oil sector for its efforts to impede their development and adoption. Nearly all of those making statements were ethanol supporters, but there were a few who voiced their support for the proposed cuts. So um, I don't think we should think the sky is falling here and that, that everything's going to go bad. We're looking just for a little more balance here. Thank you. Most of the rhetoric focused on political and economic downsides of changes to the RFS. However, one speaker focused on the human cost of energy security. The Iraqi war, for the most part, is over now, 10 years later. We have paid a heavy toll to stabilize the free flow of oil. Over that same time period, I'm unaware of a single casualty caused by the production of ethanol. I'm unaware of a single serviceman who committed suicide after deployment due to renewable fuels. I'm unaware of a prosthetic limb or wheelchair being fitted for renewable fuels. The comment period on proposed changes to the RFS ends Tuesday.